Yes, where we send out an email telling you what our, what's happening in the library every month. Um, tonight we're pleased to have Greg Huber lecture on 18th century German architecture uh, of Lehigh County and Bucks County as well. Just Lehigh County. Okay. <laughs> Greg is owner of Past Perspectives and Eastern Barn Consultants, and he will be signing his two books over here that are on the table, and I believe he also has some handouts. So without much further ado, Greg Huber. Thank you, Denise. You know, she really seems like a nice person. Um, about an hour and a half ago, she absolutely demanded that I wear a tuxedo. Now, which of you think that's fair? I don't think it's fair. And then she threatened me with wrestling me. And then I went back, to the back over there, and I was minding my own business, and she starts to sing feelings. Oh, man, that's, that's adding insult to injury. Not really. Okay, my name is Greg Huber, and I'm the owner of Past Perspectives and Eastern Barn Consultants, and we do historic homestead histories, both houses and barns. I've been doing this work for about 40 years. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I'm not a native son. Who's from New Jersey besides Carla? How many? Okay, we got about 10 or something like that. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. All right, I'm from the northern part of New Jersey, but I've been coming to Pennsylvania for about 30 years uh, before I came here in May of 2000. So I knew the architecture to some degree, but of course I moved here and um, spent a great deal of my time with architecture. And I realized, you know, that back in May of 2000 when I came here, I knew so little. And I still know so little, but that's okay. We'll, hopefully you'll forgive me with that. Um, uh, I do the histories. I've given you um, literature on that. If anyone wants to contact me further about that, they can certainly do that. I have two books that I've co-authored. One is a stone house book, and one is a barn book that came out only six months ago, seven months ago. Um, actually, the uh, stone house book is... Um, what an author hates to hear, out of print. It's out of print. I called the uh, Random House last week, and they said, I'm sorry, we don't have any more. And the uh, publisher is going to decide if they're going to um, uh, reprint it. So that's to be decided in another month or two or something. So any of you who want to buy the three copies that are left, um, you can uh, scratch yourself um, up here and uh, and buy a copy. So there's only three left. This is the barn book. This is a barn book that has 16 barns. It's one of the best illustrated uh, books on barns that I've ever seen. It's, a, it's not at all scholarly. Um, I edited the whole thing and I wrote a foreword. So it's a pretty cool book, but it's not scholarly in any sense of the uh, word. But if you really want to get a sense of, of the construction and some of the details about barns of many different types, that really is a good book. Um, okay, this is, the this is kind of a special talk for me. I've never done a county-wide uh, discussion on any vernacular type of architecture with a concentration like I've done. Uh, Denise came up to me about three months or so ago and asked me if I would like to do a talk. And I went home and all of a sudden I thought, I'll do the earliest architecture in all of uh, uh, in all of Lehigh County. This is strictly Lehigh County tonight. I mean, I could, give an, I could have given a lot of examples of uh, houses and barns that are really great, but this is our county, Lehigh County. And as many of you probably know, Lehigh County came out of Northampton County in March of 2012. In my uh, book of arithmetic, that's only five weeks away from here. I think it was March 6th or 8th or something like that. So it's only about, um, you know, five weeks away, we're going to celebrate our 200th anniversary. I was really tempted to uh, include other, other barns, other houses from other places. Um, I want to present someone who's helped me a great deal in the last month doing a number of projects. I thought, you know, I could do maybe two or three with this uh, student, and we've only done a dozen. I mean, she flies through projects. Her work is not 100% accurate all the time, but that's okay. No, none of us are perfect. Um, and uh, she's going to come up here 
and read something to you that I'd like you to hear. Karen? This sketchbook is dedicated to those men who knew America when it was very young and so had the good fortune to know the land first and to realize its worth to the fullest. Their, name were, their names were seldom recorded, for they were simple people whose days were spent in doing routine chores of the farm. Each man was woodsman, doctor, carpenter, weaver, farrier, wheelwright, shoemaker, teacher, artist, and sometimes soldier. He had a reference for excellence, a reverence so profound that all things he did, he did well. America's landscape is still dotted with his monuments. The barns and bridges, the farmhouses and mills, built by these perfectionists more than two centuries ago. Few of the structures being erected today will last the lifetime of their makers. Many will be replaced by being obsolete, out of date, or not earning enough money to pay their way. Those who seek the spirit of America might do well to look first in the countryside, for it was there that the spirit was born. While there are still patches of countryside left, and while remnants of the old barns remain, this book would serve as a guide throughout the past. We have finally come to realize the beauty and excellence of the homes built by the early Americans, but too often their barns are regarded as mere curiosities. They are, rather, the shrines of a good life and out to be remembered. Thank you, Karen. All right, raise your hand. Who wants extra credit? Come on. What book did that come from? Sloan. I'm sorry? Eric Sloan. Right, which book? The Barn Book. <laughs> the Barn Book, you're right. <laughs> what was, it was an Age of Barns. That was Eric's second book that came out in 1966. And that was his dedication page. <laughs> um, before I get started, um, I want to do something that I rarely do. I've only ever done this thing maybe two or three times in giving a number of talks. Um, I want to dedicate this talk tonight to a young person who is very bright, has a very bright future ahead of her, and um, you just met her, Karen Trope. Okay, so let's get started with the, uh, I don't think I have any more notes. And let's get started with the talk. Who wants to volunteer to kill the lights? Oh, I want to say first that, um, that I have about 85 or 90 slides here. Um, we're at about 10 after 6. I guess we'll go to close to 6, maybe 5 uh, to 7, maybe 5 after 7 or something like this. Some of these I'll probably go through very quickly. Um, and others I won't because they're more important, they have more to say, they're more pregnant with ideas and thoughts and even feelings. So I will not be going through these in any way, shape, or form in a, uh, in a consistent, um, concentrated, same manner, okay? I need a helper. Um, Darcy, can you see? Let, let's see if that. Let's see, see if it works back. Do it well, I don't know. <laughs> Just. We may make a couple of mistakes, but that's okay. Um, let me. I'm sorry. I was a Boy Scout, trust me. Um, I have my. Anybody see a stray um, laser pointer? Come on, where are you? Oh, that's not good. Can you put the lights on, please? <laughs> oh, here they are. Okay, it was just hiding. It was just being temperamental. Okay, the German architecture, earliest German architecture in Lehigh County. It's going to consist of houses, barns, and maybe a few other things. Okay, see, just click it. Atta girl. Okay, beautiful. Earliest German houses and barns. This is a house in um, Low Upper Milford uh, Township. I'm not going to really say much. It's just a. It's just kind of a motif. Uh, log construction was extremely prevalent before 1800 in uh, Lehigh County and elsewhere for sure. I'm sorry. Can everybody see? I don't want to get in your way. I got to remember that. Um, this structure right here 
is a little unusual because this log house is posted. The uh, logs come in and they're mortised into a, I'm sorry, they're tenoned into a mortised uh, post. Okay? So, um, well, Mr. Ensmeyer, who some of you know, maybe a lot of you know, uh, has pitched a lot of stuff in the last <laughs> number of years. And I caught him one day, and uh, well, he was pitching one particular thing. He was pitching some hay. Well, I'm going to pitch you a number of things tonight, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay? Now, um, you've heard the, um, the bumper sticker, no farmers, no food. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. He said, no trees, no, no buildings, no houses, no barns. And that's the way it works. This came first, then barns and houses came. So without the one, we can't have the other. This is actually the sacred oak. It's a, a chinkapin oak in the Ole Valley, or just outside the Ole Valley. It's about five to five and a half feet in diameter. Um, it's a wonderful tree. <clears throat> it's one of the best in our whole general area. It was kind of going downhill. And an arborist said that it was going downhill for about even 100 years. And then it was fed, and it was loved, and a lot of things happened, and it was saved. OK? This is one of my favorite pictures. I just love this picture. I mean, you know, it, German houses, as the things at the top says, they were rooted in cultural ways for generations, just like the sacred oak. OK? Now, I'm not going crazy. I really am not. I mean, yeah, maybe I've had some moments of, of craziness in my life. The what in the world would he be showing a tomato and basil uh, uh, jar for? Well, I don't know. I think it would be a good reason. Next, please. If I asked you if you could put together all the pieces, all the factors that went into the building, the conception, the utilization of barns and houses back 200 to 250 years ago from what we have today, could we do that? Do you think there's anyone of you in the audience can, from this little fragmentation here of several pieces of glass and a little bit of the uh, wrapping around the jar, could you tell me what that original thing was all about? I don't think so, and either could I. But that's exactly what we're doing with the remaining 18th century architecture in Pennsylvania, in, in Lehigh County and surrounding counties. We only have a tiny, tiny segment of it left. And we're trying to extrapolate from what we, what we have to what might have been 200 plus years ago. <clears throat> now you could say, well, you know what? And that's nice, but I, I really like, I just love looking at barns and houses uh, and I, I re it doesn't really ma matter to me that much what happened back 225 years ago. And that's, that's as legitimate as uh, anything. So when you love something just in and of itself, or you want to know more than just the, the pure physicalness of it, well then maybe we can think of this example. Because it really is a fragmentation. We do the best we can with what we have. And that's all we can ever do. Okay. So what is the situation? The full story of all the dynamics behind the cultural and economic environment and the, and the conception and execution, let alone the uses of the building of 18th century German vernacular architecture in Lehigh County will never be known or could be known or could be told. We only partially know the story from the few buildings that remain. And that's just basically a repeat of what I just said, OK? Now, how many of you ever found the Holy Grail? Anybody? Anybody at all? No? Well, I think I did. I think Bob did almost a year ago. This is the holy grail of early style uh, Pennsylvania German architecture. This is the finest, most original condition. Talk about fragmentation or the lack thereof. The, um, the, the uh, Schaefer, I'm sorry, the McCoy, I'll get it. The McCoy Schaefer building, Shoemaker, I'm sorry. McCoy Shoemaker building. The Stone Schweitzer is the most complete, basically 200-year-old structure, German structure that I've ever seen anywhere. Bob and I saw this in February of last year, and I said, oh, look at that. That's sweet. And we were putting together the Pennsylvania Barn um, tour, uh, State Tour. And we went to one or two other places and then came back. And lo and behold, okay, 
we saw things like this. That is an example of German side lap roof shakes. Now this actually is not the barn itself, it's a, it's a lean-to that's right next to it. But I looked up and I said, oh my gosh, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? And I did. And the barn actually, the, the main Schweitzer barn, has about 80% of its original shakes uh, still intact underneath the, the modern roof covering, whatever it was. I, it could be slate, it could be metal, I, I really didn't know. And it really didn't matter. But here it is, in all its glory. It just lasted and lasted and lasted. Whether this lean-to is original to the Schweitzer, I don't know, okay? Now this is, I'm sorry, this is in Franklin County. This is in Franklin County. This is where I cheated a little bit, okay? It's where I cheated a little bit, got outside of the, um, the area. This is about 60 miles southwest of uh, Harrisburg. It's uh, west of uh, Gettysburg by about, oh, 25 or 30 miles or something like that. This is in the basement of the barn. And, you know, many, many upper floor areas in Pennsylvania barns um, don't really get changed too much. They can, but not to a tremendous degree uh, quite often. But the basement gets changed like, you know, like crazy. I mean, it's a very utile area, so is the upper floor level. But when a basement has a good amount of, of uh, originality intact, uh, that's a wonderful thing. This barn absolutely abused the privilege of originality. It's like they forgot to the two, uh, the two uh, farming families. They were there for about 235 years. They forgot to change anything. I, I was just blown away. When, you're, when you see you know, 10,000 people and they all have two eyes and all of a sudden one person comes along and they have a third eye, um, you know, what do you think? Well, this is kind of like that. Not exactly, but kind of like that. This is a steak manger. And there were four rows of it in the basement. This is the manger trough. And this, of course, is not original here. But I mean, it, it was just crazy. So we don't have that kind of uh, situation in virtually all the buildings. This one, it remained, OK? Now, this is a project that um, we've been working on. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time that this has ever been shown. Here is a population of houses in the McCungee uh, area Back then in 1798, it was Upper Mukunji and Lower Mukunji, okay? By type, by log, by stone, and stone and log, okay? This came out of the 1798 direct federal tax of Mukunji. And this population of houses by type. The total structure number was 237. Here you have the graph, and you can see the stone, there's actually 49 here. The log houses amounted to 181 and the stone and log amounted to six. So this is really, 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 ex for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you, this is exciting information. We can say with a lot of authority, not perfect authority, that the great majority of log houses, uh, the, the great majority of houses were of log. Now, when did the first stone houses come in? I have no idea. When did the first stone and log come in? I don't know, a lot of people would consider this the uh, a transitional type, I guess. I'm not sure I really believe that, but it could be true. Let's go to the next one. Now here is a population of houses by type and number of stories. Now we're getting really serious here. Look at this. Um, one story houses are blue is blue, two story houses is red. So here's the breakdown for log, and you can see that there are many, many two-story log houses built in the 18th century. A lot of them. Look, there's 60 or 61, something like that. Of course, the one story, there are about 120. Here, the stone, you can see a, a different proportion. To me, it makes sense. There's not that many one-story uh, stone houses left. Yeah, thank you. Um, and look at the st uh, stone and log. What's interesting about this is that look at, look at the um, stone and log. The blue represents one-story houses. Now, I can't imagine, and this is what happened with the, with the survey, not the surveyors, but the, uh, the purviewers, um, back, purveyors back in the 18th century. I think the, uh, the one-story stone and log were where you had one, one section, a two-section house, one section was stone, one section was log. It wasn't that the lower part, the first five or six feet, of the, of the house was log and then the rest was stone. 
I mean, just the opposite, probably. I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to this. Look at this. Differences in story heights and material types and houses do not ref include the age of construction uh, cons era considerations, okay? So this does not include at all whether a house is built in 1750 or 1760 or 1785. That is a little bit tougher. Let's go to the next one. But here is something that is um, a little bit uh, telling, I think, but we have to extrapolate on this, the, the telling of the age of construction, although I don't have that here per se. But look at now. We're going, to put, we're going to try to put the, the length of the house in relation to the width of the house, and then to do it by graph, it was a really, really complicated, complex um, uh, affair. So we decided just to rate the houses by their length, by their broad length, the eave wall. You have an eave wall and you have an end wall or a gable wall, okay? So here you have houses between 15 to 19 feet long. You have about nine. From 20 to 29 feet long, you have about in total maybe 95 or something and then 30 to 39 feet you have this um, and then 40 to 49 you have that and I was surprised in general to see a log that many log houses over 40 feet long now maybe a few of them were actually originally 40 feet long but my guess is that they were two section houses two, two log section houses and here you have stone and log you have one I'm sorry, 50 to 59 feet, you have one in stone and one in stone and log. Again, this is Mukunji. This is not including any other township in the entire county. We're working on that. There's eight other township areas that was delineated back in 1789. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this I love. This is Barnes. Okay, uh, Barnes by type in Mukunji. The number of Barnes here and the barn types here. We have barns, old barns. This is how it was delineated in the 1798 direct tax. We have barns, old barns, log barns, small log barns, old log barns, old small log barns, very old barns. There, were, there wasn't one. <laughs> Darn it. Stone barns, stone and log barns. Look at how many stone and log barns there were. Or there are. That's crazy. There's 30, you know, there's 37 or something like that, 36. Unfinished barns, they were in the process of building it. Unfinished log barns, barns of no value, I love that one. There was even frame barns, there was maybe three or four frame barns. And stables, why would stables be so important? There's 18th century stables. Anybody have a guess of why that would be so important? Yes? I can't hear you, sir. No, no. What I'm driving at, what I'm suggesting is that when we have, again, this is the idea of fragmentation. When you have a, a Schweitzer, and, and Bob and I know of only one barn ever built that, that still ex existed, ex extant, in, in uh, southeast Pennsylvania, a standard barn. It's a particular type of barn built before 1800. So none of these, none of these are very likely standard barns or barns with symmetrical roofs. How did stables, and we, we must think it's probably horses, it could be cows too, but I would tend to doubt that. How did that play into the whole functioning of a main barn? When you have a, 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 a smaller barn with just a, it was just a hay barn, and then, or maybe a hay and just cows, or what? That is extremely suggestive of a number of things, and some of the history of the Pennsylvania barn and other barns are going to have to be re rewritten. I did re some recent research in stables, in uh, stables and barns in Philadelphia. And there was actually a barn listed for Philadelphia. There was many stables listed for Philadelphia. Okay, that's why I think stables probably refer to uh, cow, uh, to horses, not cows. So this is a great, great um, uh, graph, I think. There's a tremendous amount of information and that's from our area right here in Mukunji. Okay. So the German buildings discussed tonight, it'll, this presentation includes 17 German houses. It includes six barns. So there's many more houses than barns. Um, one remarkable architectural element recycled into a log house in Berks County, just two miles from the Pennsylvania, uh, from the uh, Lehigh County border. Okay. And the earliest German house in Pennsylvania. Okay. 
Um, just a few things about the early German houses. We won't go over all the houses with all of these uh, of, uh, traits, but dates of construction, materials, roof structure system, floor plan, and other structural systems. And of course, the floor plan is reflected here, the classic uh, three-room German floor plan, the Kuka, the Stuba, and the, uh, the Kammer. And that's not a comedy team, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, um, we look at the symbol for fertility here. Now, um, you know, a few of you, I know Bob and, and Patrick, who are sitting in the front here, have seen a number of depictions of this, but never on a barn. We came across this about eight or, eight or nine months ago into Berks County, but it's only about 800 feet from uh, the Lehigh County border. When you get to know things in architecture or even uh, anything with material culture, how do you know if it's normal? How do you know if it's from the normal? What do you know about it? It's a numbers game. If we didn't know the sign for fertility, we'd look at that thing and say, well, what the heck is it? The reason we, we can say what it is, in all likelihood, is because of the numbers of buildings that we've been looking at. Okay? The owner of this place, bless his soul, has been there for 45 years. I went there, and he had never seen it. It's way up, obviously, just below the peak, but it really has a great deal of significance. It's a wonderful thing. And Patrick is trying to sort out all the, the things with that kind of thing in general. And it's never been done before, okay? Now, here's uh, an example of what I'm talking about. Here's a church in Long Swamp. Anybody want to guess the date of construction? Nobody? It's right there. It's 1837. I don't know what this is. And why don't I know what it is? Because I haven't seen the numbers. I'm sure if they put this on a stone uh, a church back 175 years ago, that most people would know it. Maybe not. I don't know. What do you think, Patrick? March 29th. It's March 29th. Cool. So there's the M. Okay, you just asked. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Now, can everybody see that? Right here is 1835. This is in a barn in Lehigh, I'm sorry, in Mukunji. 1835 with a man who's about 20 inches high and it's painted red. This barn, by the way, has three dates of 1835 and all the construction features, the fabric, the style, the design, the construction suggest around that date. Now what I'm getting at is that I don't know what this is. He may be utilizing a flail for threshing on the floor and he's wearing a top hat but it's very faded. The owner of this barn did not know she had lived there almost 40 years and she never knew that it was on the Mousestead wall. This is the Mousestead wall that separates the mouths on each side from the uh, wagon floor, which is over here. It's on the other side of this. Not on the far side, but on this side. Um, you know, again, it's a numbers game. Were these common back 150 years ago, 200 years ago? I just don't know. So we need to be ever vigilant and looking at things, categorizing things in our minds, and uh, there's just a lot of factors involved with, um, with these barns and with these houses. Pardon me just a second. 12 to 15 of you, okay? A um, lot, a lot of things. I can't spend time in here, but there's a tremendous amount of information and a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of uh, things that can be talked about with this uh, building. Look at the Chevron door. It's not original. John Heil was put to task with this, I think in the late 40s. John Heil is the a preservation architect who died only uh, 10 months ago, who was just shy of 105. Okay? Here's the end wall. We see three uh, windows with segmental arches. Segmental arches normally, at least in the more southern part of the, uh, of the state, maybe within 20, 25 miles of... Uh, of Philadelphia, segmental arches on houses usually indicate a date of construction before 1770. I don't think that's the case so much in, uh, in fact, I know one example that, that we'll see. Um, here's the, uh, the pent roof here. It's a wraparound pent roof. Okay. Now, who can read this? Patrick, can you read that? Yeah, I can. <clears throat> Go ahead. It, it, you want me the English or the yeah. German? Take, take this. 
In English, uh, it would be, God protect this house from all danger and lead our souls into the hall of heaven. There you have it. Okay. Um, now, this probably, very likely, replaced the original stone that was there. Um, it's certainly not original there. Um, I'm assuming that the 1756 was, in fact, the date of construction, and it very likely was, okay? Now we come on to another house. This is the Troxel, I'm sorry, the, the Zeisloff three-room house, the classic three-room German log house of the mid-18th century. This was moved, it was taken down from a site about 12 or 14 years ago. It was held in storage. I saw it, fortunately, before it became a museum, and the reason I say that is because I want to know some features of houses before they get changed around. Again, that original fabric, that original construction, the sense of what the a mindset of what people were, what they did 250 years ago. A lot of information. Here you have the, um, the kitchen here. You have the stove room and the commer. Why would there be a break? These are these are uh, ceiling joists, the end of the ceiling joists on the first floor. Why is there a break there? Anybody know? No. Right. Kitchens in uh, the early German houses are anywhere from about eight and a half to eleven feet wide. Maybe there's in some cases they're wider. Okay. Here you can see that this is pretty much in line with that. So the door, the main door, led into the kitchen. Okay? Anybody know what that is? A hole in the wall that got plugged up. Right. <laughs> Ceiling fenster? Want to tell us about that, Patrick? Ceiling fenster. Say, I, I'm not, I don't. Say, say it again. Ceiling fenster. Fenster. Yeah. What is it? Solar window. It's a solar window, right. Yeah. Right. We only know of a few in Lehigh County. In fact, I think I only know two. I think I only know two. This is one of them, okay? It's a solo hole. So window. So what does it do? What did it do? It let out souls. Okay. Did it let them in too, Patrick? If a person died, the belief is... If a person dies, yes. You have that in England. They're called soul holes. They're, they're actually called soul holes. And sometimes, when the body dies and it's in the upper floor, it gets stiff and the, and the, and the staircase passageway is so tight and so weird that way that they have to actually poke a hole through the, through the stone wall, let the body out, and then plug it up again. And then when an architectural historian like me comes along, the, oh, look, there was a window at one time. And that's not the case. Well, it is the case in certain cases, but not in all cases. Okay. Now, here is the Shimer. 1760 stone and log house in Upper Milford Township. Great, great building, and it's relatively unknown. This is one of our stone and log buildings, okay? This is stone, it's a two section house, stone here, and what's here? Go ahead. Log. I have to give one individual credit for taking several of the photos of the Shimer house, Kevin Shoemaker. You can take a, a bow later on if you'd like, Kevin. Um, this is a wonderful thing. This is the back wall, actually, and there's two posts. The other post, I'm not sure if you can see, but this log is about 15 feet, uh, yeah, 15 inches high, and it goes for the for the entire second floor. This is one of the best early German houses remaining in the entire county. You can believe that, okay? Susan, where are you, Susan? Can you see this? Yeah. This is another example for me of the Holy Grail. This is two miles um, from the Lehigh County border. This is a recycled uh, fireplace lintel, re re-put or repositioned into a much later 19th century log house. I can't read this if for no other reason that it's not really all that visible. But it's about 18 inches high. Um, this is the tree of life motif. And there's the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter up here. You can't see it very well. I apologize.
But that's the way it is. And look at the rhythmical, the sine wave, S-I-N-E. Um, I wish I, can you make that out at all, uh, Patrick, at all? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one. And here's the date, 1755, look at that. Isn't that something? There are apparently two, in southeast Pennsylvania, there's two fireplace lintels that have tree of, meat, tree of life motifs on them. And this is one of them. And it's just a superb spot. Um, it's, it's of all the elements of German architecture in all of southeast Pennsylvania, meaning east of the river and south of the Blue Mountains. This is one of the very finest one. Bob, en Bob Ensminger, Bob told me about this. And oh boy, I mean, I received energy from this. I mean, I saw it, I was blown away. And I, I literally felt the energy of this log and the date and the carving and, and more than anything, the spirit and the decisions that were made that lay behind what, what this uh, log means, to, what, what it meant to them and what it can mean to us. Okay? Now, we come inside the Scheimer house and this is a very typical feature of 18th century German. The joists, the floor joists, oversail, not, they don't oversail, they lay on top of the longitudinal summer beam, okay? That's very common. It doesn't always happen, but most often it does. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so that's not a very big summer beam. Okay, next. Now here, you can make a comparison in your own mind what a layer, now this uh, house section is probably around 1800, it could be 1810, it could be 1790, um, but this is how the the fabric, the design changed uh, over a period of probably 15 to 30 years where the joists, the ceiling joists, uh, tended into a mortised summer beam. So it's very different. This is on the first floor, the other one was on the second, uh, they're both on the first floor, okay? Sometimes they are. I don't think in this particular house they're stacked. What he means by staggered is that they don't enter into the summer beam at the same point. They're not in line with each other. They're, they're staggered. Okay, now, here is another um, just magnificent thing. This is a house in uh, Fredericksburg in Maryland. A very, very German house. This is the only supposedly completely intact five-plate stove in its original con uh, condition, original position, anywhere. There may be some very rare exceptions to that. But basically, it's unique. Okay? Now, you, now go, go back, I'm sorry. Yep, thank you. Um, this is um, the stove room. It's a stove. It's a five-plate stove. It, it was fed coals for warmth, of course, um, from the uh, Kuka or the kitchen on the other side. Now the reason why this was uh, preserved is because it was set inside a, a closet and that's just the what it was. Of course it wasn't a museum for 200 years. It may have become a museum 30 or 40 years ago or something like this. Look at the difference in the paint there. That might have been the presence, indicates the presence of the, um, of the, uh, of the closet. But that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay. Now here we get into the roofs. Uh, of the Scheimer house, and we see the uh, Ligonier stool. Okay, the Ligonier stool is a lying chair. Bob was the first one to use that, I think, in North America. It's, it, it, is, it does come from Germanic countries, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, where the form was used, utilized. We have five basic parts of the Ligonier stool, or lying chair. You have the principal rafter right here, which you can't see very well, but it's wider at the top uh, by about four to six inches normally than at the bottom. It had to receive this timber, which is the pearl and plate. But anyway, it's a very distinctive feature. Um, I like this one compared to another one um, that I had. This is a straining beam, and it connects the tops of the principal rafters. It does not obviously go all the way to the top, unlike principal common rafters in English-based buildings. Here's the brace. Now, one of the things about this, about this building, I mean, that's rare enough, and it's a, a really great thing, what's even more rare, is this original siding. On the other side of this is where the, 
1800 stone section was built. So it was built right up against the, um, the original siding there, and that is a real rarity. That you find very infrequently. There are far more Ligandersstuhl roof trusses. I know of only three, and there may be a fourth one in all of Lehigh County. We found one uh, in, Mar in uh, August, September of this year, uh, very close to the Little Lehigh, okay? Now, here you don't really see much. This is the um, part of the Ligandersstuhl further in, or farther out, I guess, far farther in. Um, but this is not an original chimney. But it is off-centered. You know, so many times when you hear uh, German off-centered chimneys, I mean, center, center chimney, center chimney, they're not centered. They're off-centered. So that, you may be saying that's equivalent a little bit, but it's important to understand that they're not, they were not centered on the, um, on the roof or on the floor, okay? Here's a, a shot of that a, a wonderful original siding. I think it's pine. I'm not 100% sure, okay? Here's the barn on the property. This is, uh, I, I beg your pardon, it's not German. It's an English-based, uh, English Lake District barn, okay? Only one of two in the entire county. I don't know how many there are in, in Berks County. How many do you know about? Several of the older valley. It's not, it's not clicking upstairs. Okay, yeah. Well, anyway, this is one of two in, and this is at the Scheimer House, a uh, Scheimer Homestead. You can see the stone. How often do you see in, Bur in, uh, in uh, Lehigh County stone from the, the ground level all the way up to the eave level? Well, you don't see it very often. This is the original um, length of the bar. It was probably built around 1800, give or take. Displayed loopholes, okay? Isn't it interesting that they have this great German house and they put an English barn there? It shows you the acculturation or the combining of cultures at particular spots, places. Now here's a, a, another great early German house, the Troxel House. This is not very well known at all. Probably about a 1760 house. Bob and I were into this uh, in 1997. In November, John Heil showed us this house. Um, here's the drip ledge. It'd be a pent roof right here. Another, again, the off-center chimney with the door leading into the kuka. Okay. Okay, here's the end wall. Anybody ever hear of the grain in the attic? Well, this is probably the grain in the attic, I would imagine. Maybe not, but it could be. This is the, certainly the attic area. Look at the steepness of the roof. Not as much as the Rittenhouse home, but it's, uh, it's a great house. It's right off the Jordan Creek in, uh, in Whitehall. One of the gems of uh, Lehigh County, okay? Go back, Karen. Another one? That one? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, it could be. I, I don't think it was. It might have been, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, yeah, it might be. Might be. He just said a hoist beam. If that's a granary and they had to hoist things up and everything, that might be what that is. Okay? Now, this is the shelter house. This is, a lot of you probably know this house. It's a wonderful log house. Um, built from the mid to the late 18th century. There's discussion about when it was actually built. The guy who did this research did research that showed the original owner was back there in 1735. What do we know? We know that that is not necessarily at all when the house was constructed. It, one does not signify the other. It may signify the other, but it doesn't, it, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship and we need to keep that in mind. Here's the original part, though, right here. And in, and I don't really know this section all that well, but this was an expansion, an upper floor level, okay? And then it was posted, and then this was built. So whether this is in three sections, I mean, three building campaigns or two, I really can't say 100%, okay? But look at that one of the features, one of the early features of 18th century pre-1790 construction, when you have logs and you have V-notching, and we don't always have V-notching here in Lehigh County, we also have dovetailing. Look at the steepness of the sides of that. Now, in a, in a second you'll see others, but hold on. Um, this is called teardrop uh, corner notching, okay? Here you see a, uh, well that's okay. Here you see uh, this, this house section was built probably 
30 to 60 years later, the V-notching still, but much less steep-sided than this one. Okay? Now, when we talk about fragmentation and the breakup of the, of the, of the construction, I mean, the, the fabric of the homestead, we have to take a lot of things into consideration. This is what you call, these are two hay barracks. Okay? To what extent were they used in Pennsylvania German tradition? I don't know. Uh, seemingly a lot less than they were uh, in West Central New Jersey. Because I've met people in West Central New Jersey who've actually utilized them up into the 1960s and 70s, and I guess in a few cases, you gonna fire me, uh, Sarah Jane? Sorry. Okay. Um, these are now go back. Sorry. These are hay barracks. This was a painting done about 1875 by William Sartain. It was a a painting that was found in a bunch of stuff in an attic in Philadelphia back about 15 years ago. I heard about it and I put a bid on it and I was the high bidder. And I'm really happy that I did that. It has. It, it did not look like this. It mostly looked like this, but it had to be uh, reconstructed, redone. So um, I know that John Heil said that he had seen a few hay barracks on some of the homesteads back in the 30s and 40s. Alan Kaiser did. Bob, have you ever seen a hay barrack? No. Yeah, no, I mean, there's... In Holland, yeah, right, that doesn't count. Okay, but these were probably relatively common. There are contracts, existing surviving contracts in the, in the uh, Holland Dutch culture that goes back into the 1630s that cites the use of hay barracks. And that is not a rarity. There's many citations to hay barracks in the Holland Dutch culture. Okay? Now, this is one of the unknown, uncelebrated gems in Lehigh County. This is the Hens Hans Hamburg House in Heidelberg. I saw this, and I said, oh, geez, look at that. Wonderful building. Wonderful building. This, this end wall, this stone end wall, was reconstructed in 1846. I know that because, because I asked the owner. No, I didn't ask the owner. There's a date stone right up there. Um, but here, we don't have a chimney, of course, but here is the... The, the original door, the original door frame leading in to the cuckoo. Okay? All right? Look at this wonderful date stone. Is that a thing of beauty or what? 1769. What does it say, Patrick? Uh, with God I built this house. Or with God I have, yeah, built this house in the year of uh, 1769. Johannes Heinberg at the top. It seems to say Christian, or oh, oh no, I'm sorry, in, in the year of Christ. Um, it's oh, hard to make out because yeah, of the, the yeah. So, with God's help, I built this house. Yes. Yeah, okay. You know, this is one of the very best date stones, if, it's, if not the best date stone on any structure in Lehigh County. Just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And of course, it has all this dimpling. There may be another technical term for that around the uh, periphery and also around the lettering, okay? Here's the original uh, door leading into the house with the segmental arch. Look at that broad segmental arch, wow. And the very, very heavy uh, door frame, door jams with the, uh, six, with the six panel door. I think this is a two, a two, an upper door half and a lower door half, I would say with that little line right there, okay? Look at that. That German splat uh, balustrade, look at that. Is that a thing of beauty too? This is in this house. All original, the new post, look at that. Wow. I only know of like eight or 10 in all of Southeast Pennsylvania. Okay? This is the, this is the now log house, 1760, 1770, give or take. Okay, you wouldn't think it was log, but of course the logs were covered up by this exterior siding. Roof support has a principal rafter system. It's a really neat, neat affair. Um, I don't know how they arrived at that date if they depended solely on 
on, um, on a, a deed search, they should be shot, okay? Now this, this darkened house is a house in Whitehall. It's the Guth Stone House. Um, people give it an earlier date than I do. They say it in the 1740s. I'd probably give this in the 1770s or so. It has an off-center chimney. It has a date stone right here. I'm not convinced that it's original, but it's, one of, it's certainly one of the best early, uh, one of the best 18th century houses we have anywhere in uh, Pennsylvania, in Lehigh County, sorry. Go ahead. Here's a shot from the, the back. It has the segmental arches, but that roof line is not all that steep. It's fairly steep, okay? I don't know, I haven't been in the house, unfortunately. Yeah. This is a log house up in Lynn Township. Let me live in a house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. The men who are good and the men who are bad, as good and as bad as I. I would not sit in the scorner's seat nor hail the cynic's ban. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Okay? This is the log house. The people have lived there for maybe 10, 15 years, I'm not sure. Very small house. Look, look at the size of that. A family of four, I believe, uh, lives there. <coughs> they had no idea that the upper floor area right here was an extension of the original. You talk about that teardrop um, uh, V-notching, that's what this house has, okay? Look at that. Beautiful stuff. You don't see it very often, not in our area anyway. Okay? Another, did I misspell that, Patrick? Anyway, there's a ceiling tenster. Okay? Again, the gap in the, a gap in the, um, in the positioning of the joists on the first floor. Why? Because of the chimney. The chimney position. Look at, look at that log. You can see that steep notching right there. So it's just a great house. Small, but great. Okay? Um, now, now we jump to another house actually in McCungee, in Lower McCungee on Orchard Road. And I'm putting this here. This is actually the Henry Knappenberger circa 1790 stone house in LMT with German paling in the basement. So this is the original flooring, and this is a subfloor. Some people call it a subfloor. This is the German paling with this insulation area that may be two to possibly three inches thick. Look at that ledge that they incorporated into the uh, joist. There's probably about, oh, you know, who knows, like four or five dozen of these in southeast Pennsylvania. Anyway, this is one of the houses. There could be even more. This is the basement of the Knappenberger house. Okay? Now, we'll go back to the uh, house in Lynn Township. So we'll just go over this really quickly. The reasons for the early dating of the Lynn Township log house. In general, small size of house. Classic early style teardrop corner V-notching. Off-center chimney. Not a centered one. Probable three-room plan. The presence of the ceiling fenster. And the presence of German paling in the ceiling of the basement. Not seen here. But it does have that. I've seen it. So. Anyway, those are the main reasons why. Um, there are probably a few others that I didn't take note of, okay? Now we get toward the late, latter part of the uh, 18th century. This is the Peter Haas house in Upper Mukunji. It was built in 1792 or 1793, I forget which, but it's a five bay house, five door uh, window, uh, wall openings rather, I'm sorry. Um, it had a pen eave, you can see, Maybe some of you can actually see the discoloration here on this band along there. Okay, that was the presence. They took the uh, pen eave off. And that was a very common feature back in the, uh, in the 18th century and as late as about 1810, possibly 1820. It's a great house. It's right off of Route 222, okay? Look at this great, great door surround, original door surround. I can't think of another one in all of Lehigh County, very original. There's another door next to it. Of course, that's not original, but look at that. I mean, talk about prominence. Boy, were they showing off. And there it is, okay? There's another house in uh, Upper Saucon. 
It's a two-section house. This is the original section. Here's the addition right there. Uh, probable kitchen in the basement. Uh, the blank. I think it was a George blank. Either Abraham or George. I'm not sure which. Um, in the 1790s. This is a very obscure house. It's very, very little known. Um, but it has some neat, neat stuff in it. I had a, you know, I had a time constraint tonight. I had about four or five other uh, really good um, shots of interior features. I have a few, okay? Here's the other part. This is the 1798 part, the 1790 part, okay? There's the, what probably would be the original date stone. Isn't that beautiful? Okay? Now here's the interior of the older section. Okay, look at that uh, uh, side wall of the uh, staircase. These spindles I don't think are original, but everything else is. But look at that, isn't that wonderful? Okay, here's the staircase going up to the second floor, of course. Okay. Okay, so what came first, the chicken or the egg? Anybody want to guess why I asked that question? Why would I ask that question? All original. I don't think that door latch is original, but likely the door is. But look at that. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? All right, let's look at it this way. If you have an angle of a staircase uh, uh, section going up to the attic at this angle, and this is the other section, staircase, and a landing right here, you are restrained by what you can do. Let's assume that this is, this is the, in the original thought. So the, the, the craftsman, the carpenter, had to conform his ideas of this arrangement of these panels to the, to the staircase, the angle of the staircase. It only makes perfect sense. So what came first? I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm not a carpenter. But it, I think it's a, a relevant question. OK? And here's a shot of the, um, just to the side, that wonderful uh, balustrade with the original newel posts and all that, okay? Here is the 1790-ish, um, I can only assume, stone ground barn or Grundeshire right on the property. Um, it has a principal common reactor system. We're not gonna get on the inside, okay? Here we come back to Lower Makunji. This is the um, Knappenberger uh, stone house. It's a four bay house with the segmental arches, only one of a very few in all of the county that have these segmental arches. Probably it built around 1790. The federal tax has dimensions that are very close to this. Not exactly, but very close, okay? Now we have one of the best, best, best barns, if not the best barn in all of uh, Lehigh County. This is in Upper Milford Township. Again, this is, a, this is a, just a, a magnificent barn. There's only two that I know of in all of uh, Pennsylvania where it's stone. This is the from here up is the upper floor level. Here is the basement. This is a Schweitzer. We can clearly see when Bob and I looked at this that the original four bay appendage on the front was removed. Okay? <clears throat> and oh, all right, that's that's the inside. Here you have the Ligeter stool. And one of the rare uh, pearl and plates that are canted. You don't have to worry too much about what pearl and plates are. It's just that they're timbers that support the roof. They go all the way down from one end wall to the other end wall. <clears throat> but this is canted or at, at an angle. We only know of about four or five of those. And this is the addition in here. The roof was deteriorating. You can probably make out some new construction there. And that's kind of a success story. We were able to get in there and, and talk to him. He got a copy of Bob's book. Okay. Here is the Peter Kohler house, circa 1795. Now here's an example of where a, a title search or a deed search helped me determine that it probably was around 1795. Sometimes they can help. They never purely indicate it, or rarely so, only under very particular circumstances. Here's the original section, and here's the addition. The addition, by the way, in houses and barns, 90, 95% of the time, are smaller than the original section. That's just the way it was. Maybe not all the time, but very often. This house had a ligander stool. The flattest level uh, structure I've ever seen that included a Ligander stool. Okay? Here's another very good barn. This is near the uh, Troxel house that I showed you before. Um, this is about a, a circa 1800 house uh, barn. It's a Schweitzer with an asymmetrical roof line. It has the, the front four bay appendage. This is just all along the Jordan Creek in South Whitehall. 
as it says. These are cutouts. I don't think they were afterthoughts or a retrofit of any kind. I think they're original. I think Bob and I have seen maybe a dozen of these, uh, of these stone barns with these cutouts like this. It saved wood, it saved uh, stone. There could have been an access, a, a secondary function. I don't know, maybe it was access for the interior. Can't be sure. But here's stone to the eave level, not to the, not to the uh, peak. So that helps in general date the, the building. It could be 1810 even. It has a principal rafter system and a unique one, okay? Now here's a barn in Upper Milford Township. Um, it is the log barn that's closest to us in McCungee here, within about five or six miles. It's a transitional Schweitzer, asymmetrical roof line. It has some early style um, hardware. It's a wonderful building. A um, lot of features to it. We can't go through hardly any of them, okay? And here's the logs on the inside. This is a stone and log transitional Schweitzer, a very rare structure indeed, okay? Here's the house. I know you can't make that out, but it says 1799. WW, I can't remember what WW is, but here you have Modillions or either that or just plain dental molding, but extremely, um, you know, opulent. A circular window right under it. You, we see houses every once in a while like that. Probably not built much after about 18, 10, or 20. Okay? Here's a, a very German feature. Uh, Bob Bucher, who some of you know, wrote a treatise on uh, red tile, German red, red roof tiles. Um, he started this tour that included 25 buildings, and this is the first one on this tour. There's three, I think there's three, but there's certainly two. I think there's a third building with this red tile roof. And um, how late it went into the 19th century, I can't tell you, but it's an early feature for sure, okay? Here's a, here's a posted log house. I can't tell you the exact date, but it's probably close to the uh, 18th century. Um, and it has an extension of the ceiling uh, joist that created a Vordoc-like front extension. Very rare, very rare, okay? Here's a house in, in uh, uh, Lower McCungee Township, probably early, an off-centered uh, chimney. It has fairly steep notching. Okay, go ahead. And here's the, the stone glimmisher on the uh, on the property. Very nice barn. But later, it has cut nails in it. Probably built around 1820 or so. So it was not the original one. The original one was very likely log. Okay? Now, here is the... Um, Hey, Bob North, can you tell me? What, what's the name associated with this? Stegel? Strevis. 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 This is the Strevis house. Right. Um, I think it's probably built late in the 18th century. It has a stone addition on the one end. It has a wonderful barn on the property. Uh, we'll see another. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is the um, uh, lintel over the fireplace. Look at the size of that son of a gun. Oak. Probably about 17, 18 inches in height, okay? Um, here's the shot of it. I know of a, it's too bad I didn't get a picture of it. I know a log lintel recycled into a house in, um, I guess that's Upper Milford. It doesn't matter exactly where it is, but it's in the Dillingerville area. It was the Dillinger Shore house, and it had a recycled lintel that was just shy of two feet thick. We're talking about that height, well, two feet, you know two feet. Well, as I do. Okay? All right. Extra points. Who can tell me the date of this of barn? You're good. You are very good. Very classic thing. Very classic on a stone barn. The, uh, the, in our area, in our general broad area, the um, basement level door entry on the end wall was 95% of the time placed toward the house end. That's where the horses went in. But this is a very, very well-preserved door hood. And uh, we see, you know, we still see them quite a lot in, uh, in our area, okay? And now we have the twin sister barns of the velodrome. So one, one era meets another era. The earlier style, uh, Stone Schweitzer, the classic Schweitzer, meets the later built standard barn. And of course, this, this is much more utile 
than this one, at least relative to the economic environment in which it was built. And this gave, this, this gave way to this one, okay? And like this tree type, most examples of early German vernacular architecture in Lehigh County have disappeared. And that is for sure. Anybody know what leaf this is? Huh? Chestnut, right, exactly. Okay? And so why are we here tonight? What's the real reason we're here tonight? We're here to be reminded of what we already know. We're here tonight because we remember. Thanks very much, everyone, for coming out tonight. I'll be signing some books up here. Anybody who wants to have a book and have me sign it, I can do that. Um, everybody got a notification. Oh, um, actually, I'd like to have a showing of hands. Who would like to be notified of uh, when the Stone House book comes out? Yeah? Okay. Um, can I get help? Can you... Can you just give that to anybody who raises their hand for notification of the Stonehouse book. Raise your hand. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone.